Um, I was a student at the University of Texas where the head of the Romance Language Department was a man named Aaron Schaffer, or as the Texan said, Schaefer, who had grown up with Aaron Copeland. And um, I met the Schaffers, his wife was named Dorothy, through a French professor on the same faculty. There had been a meeting there was a French club that got together every month. And after a meeting there, um, Aaron Schaffer was understandably proud about his long, long friendship with Aaron Copeland. And he mentioned that he had some um, Copeland manuscripts. And so at the end of that meeting, they invited Roy, this other French professor, and me over for a nightcap. And there were these original Copeland manuscripts on the piano rack. So when I left the University of Texas in early 1943, I asked Dr. Schaffer, I never called him Aaron, I asked Dr. Schaffer whether he would give me a, an introduction to Aaron Copeland, which he did, a very kind one. It was not until I had my first so to speak, respectable job, which came along, I think it was the fall of 1944, uh, did I have the courage to present that letter. And I sent it to Aaron Copeland by mail and immediately received a cordial invitation to come see him. And that was what finally got us together. He made a few telephone calls on my behalf. He was very kind in trying to get me together with people I would like to meet and who could be helpful. But it was not till I forget how long after that, there was a concert up at Juilliard in honor of Paul Hindemith, which he was conducting with the Juilliard Orchestra and the cream of the New York musical world, at least of those who were interested in contemporary music, were there. They performed a piece I have never encountered since then. Hindemith called it Frau Musica. Um, that wouldn't work for an Anglophone audience, so they called it In Praise of Music, and the subtitle was Frau Musica. But it's to a text by, of all people, Martin Luther. And Hindemith wrote it during his Gebrauchsmusik days in Germany. And there are two sections of it. It's a delightful piece. There are two sections of it where he wants the audience to join in the singing. And so for everybody who came, you got a printed sheet with the words and the music. And Hindemith, before starting the concert, conducted a little rehearsal. Um, I never got to know Hindemith well. I did have several encounters with him, but uh, I heard from, among others, from Aaron Copeland that when he suffered an attack of furor tortonicus, he could be hell on wheels. But uh, that particular evening, he was absolutely charming. And he conducted this little rehearsal. Of course, he had an exceptionally gifted musical audience there to work with. And the performance went off beautifully, but that was the, uh, the first sort of social encounter between me and Aaron. And I remember <laughs> I was so new in that world, when the intermission came, he asked whether I'd like to go out. And apparently that was during one of my non-smoking phases because I said, no, I wouldn't. I was so out of my mind charm to be in the company of Aaron Copeland. I was delighted to stay there <laughs> sitting alongside him and making conversation. And he grew noticeably restive. And I finally realized he wanted to go out. And sure enough, when I got to the lobby, I found out why. Because as soon as he showed his face, every young composer in New York who was at that concert immediately surrounded him. That lasted, that kind of position, personal position of Aaron's, 
lasted until the post-war dodecaphonic wave came and younger composers had other interests. And I remember a memoir that Lenny Bernstein published. It was some big divisible by five birthday of Aaron's. The editor of High Fidelity asked Lenny to write a piece. And he told about a concert in New York. It was after, I think it was after Aaron had even begun to dabble in dodecaphony. And uh, after the concert, Aaron had said to Lenny, do you realize that there was not one single young composer in that concert tonight? So that development very definitely hurt him. But at the time we went to that Hindemith concert, he was like a magnet. <laughs> 